Hello everyone, welcome to Diplomatic Channel. This week we have our eyes on two developing stories. North Korea continues to provoke its neighbor South Korea. Last week it claimed to have launched a hydrogen bomb that leaders doubted ever happened. Well, through US intelligence we know that the hydrogen bomb was tested and the test had all the characteristics of a hydrogen bomb, including a tremor, however insignificant. Well, studies are still ongoing. Now over the weekend the North celebrated the success of its fourth nuclear test, We'll tell you about it later. But also on the program, we'll be discussing the escalating row between Saudi Arabia and Iran. Remember, this row is over Saudi Arabia's execution of a Muslim Sheikh Nimr al-Nimr alongside 47 other al-Qaeda terrorists. Iran claims the Quraik was a man of truth and integrity and promised they would get their due rewards for their action. Some Iranians, however, took the law into their own hands and attacked the Saudi embassy in Tehran to express their anger. Saudi Arabia has withdrawn its envoy from Tehran. There has, however, been international condemnation for Iran's actions. Notice how the focus has changed from the executed sheikh to Iran's attack on the Saudi embassy. Protests have been held across the Arab world against Iran. Professor Charles Dokobo of the Nigerian Institute of International Affairs will be joining us to understand the direction this is all going. I am Amarachi Ubani. North Korea continues to push its limits with the international community, especially as regards its missile tests. It's safe to say that at this point, the war in Syria is not the only headache right now in international conflict resolution. North Korea is part of the 191 states that joined the Treaty of the Non-Proliferation of Nuclear Weapons, whose objective is to prevent the spread of nuclear weapons and weapons technology, to promote cooperation in the peaceful uses of nuclear energy, and to further the goal of achieving nuclear disarmament in general and complete disarmament. North Korea acceded to the treaty in 1985 but never came into compliance and then it announced its withdrawal in 2005. A Glifu North Korea celebrates the success of a hydrogen bomb test. News of the test had come on Wednesday announced by local media, the KCNA and the KRT. As with its other nuclear test, leader Kim Jong-un relished the anger and frustration expressed by the South and its allies over the test. First, they debated whether it was true. Experts had doubted the said device set-off was a hydrogen bomb but later accepted the news when confirmed by U.S. authorities. In retaliation, South Korea unleashed ear splitting propaganda barrage over its border with the North. The last time it had done this was in August 2015. The North had responded with artillery fire. <laughs> Tensions are high on the Korean Peninsula. In addition to the South's barrage of propaganda, about 300 protesters Mostly war veterans gathered in central Seoul, holding up banners, urging tougher sanctions against North Korea. The protesters want the South Korean government to fully prepare for further North Korea provocations and urge the government to reconsider developing a nuclear program. While neighboring China urged the North to stick to its denuclearization pledges and avoid taking actions that would make worse the situation. The United States warns that North Korea could face additional economic sanctions and is considering working with China to determine the best response. The UN obviously is working um, after uh, an emergency Security Council meeting that was convened by the United States and Japan to discuss options for a response. Uh, obviously, uh, the nation of China wields more influence over the North Korean regime than probably any other country in the world. Uh, and we certainly want to uh, work closely with them uh, to determine uh, an appropriate response. U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry said he had spoken with a Chinese foreign minister, Wang Yin, on Thursday about various options for responding to North Korea's fourth nuclear test. 
China is North Korea's main economic and diplomatic ally, although relations between them have been rough in recent years. China, however, does not promise a solution to dealing with the present issue, but it has identified the major problem as it sees it. The key to resolving the issue also is not on China. Even though proceeding from the whole situation to maintain the international denuclearization system and peace and stability in the eastern North Asia region, China always proposes and actively advocates to properly solve relevant parties' reasonable concerns through dialogues and negotiations under the framework of six-party talks and finds out a long-term peace and order on the peninsula. Meanwhile, the U.S. closest Asian ally, Japan, condemned the missile test. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe said North Korea's actions tested the international community. North Korea, however, continues to be oblivious to the chaos it has caused around it. But state-run television on Friday aired a video showing the country's leader, Kim Jong-un, watching an underwater test fire of a submarine-launched ballistic missile. The video cannot be independently verified and there are no specifics on the date, but it is believed to have taken place in December last year. If confirmed, it follows a test launch in May of the submarine-launched ballistic missile that not boast as a success, but has not been independently verified either. When we come back after the break, we're looking at what could potentially become a major diplomatic issue and religious face-off between Saudi Arabia and Iran. Please stay with us.